Hi there. Have you ever wondered what Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6 really means? Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Thank you for tuning into This Way to Hope. I learned something a few years ago that I would like to share with parents who have young children. I think what I came to understand concerning this verse will be valuable. So some years ago, I came across a concept called antiphonal grouping. It is actually a system that Hebrews use when they are writing things like Psalms and some aspects of Proverbs. So this is how it works. They actually look at two groupings of statements that would be in the reading or in the poem and they look at the parallel. The parallels that are placed are sometimes repetitious or sometimes have syn synonyms or contrasts in those parallels. Stick with me here. I'm going somewhere with this. <laughs> okay. So, for example, a synonymous parallel would be something like the verse that says, part A, he maketh the storm a calm, and then part B, so that the waves thereof are still. Then you have something like an antithetical parallel. For example, in Psalm 1 verse 6, the A part would say, the Lord knows the way of the righteous. The B part says, but the way of the ungodly will perish. So you can see it's a contrast. Then you have what is called synthetic parallels. In this example, it adds to information or it completes what was said in the first line. And it can actually um, spread across a number of lines, creating an alternating parallel. So for example, we could see this in Psalm 37, 3 to 5, where it says in the A part, trust in the Lord and do good. B, so you will dwell in the land and enjoy security. A, take delight in the Lord. B, and he will give you the desire of your heart. A, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him. B, and he will act. If you are to separate the parallels and read all the A's together and then all the B's together, this is what it would sound like. Trust in the Lord and do good. Take delight in the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him. So you will dwell in the land and enjoy security. And he will give you the desires of your heart. He will act. Now I hope your mind is beginning to understand where I am going. So when I ex explored this verse, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it, I decided to apply the principle of looking at the antiphonal grouping, looking at the parallels within the verses and the A parts or the B parts and how they line up with each other. So then it meant I had to go to verse 4 and 5. Verse 4 says, By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. That's one sentence. Verse 5 says, Thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. And then we know verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So if we explore those verses a little bit more deeply, we can actually see a synthetic parallel. We can see a antithetical parallel as well in terms of a contrast. So verse 4, by humility and fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. 
and then it shows you the contrast in five thorns and snares are in the way of the forward and then it goes on to say train up the child in the way he should go what is the point I am making here I'm showing or trying to show that what train up a child in the way he should go in the path he should go actually looks like is teaching a child verse 4 humility and fear of the Lord because this is where riches and honor and life will lie and when he is old he will not depart from that humility and fear of the Lord that's what it means to train up a child in the way he should go. And the contrast to that, the opposite would be that the individual who is not trained in humility and fear of the Lord would actually be on the path that goes down to thorns and snares that would be in the way and would keep their soul from prospering, from engaging, from uh doing well <laughs> for want of a better word so if we use that principle we could come to the conclusion that to train up a child in the way he should go that when he is old he will not depart from it actually means teach your child humility and the fear of the Lord for in this he will have riches he will have honor and he she will have life now, you may say, don't agree, can't really see it, but think about it, because either way, you couldn't lose. Humility, I want to add, does not mean that you are teaching your child to let others walk over them. Humility actually has to do with modesty, has to do with um, meekness. That's the word, meekness. Now, to be meek does not mean that people will walk over you, but you're actually teaching the child to have respect for self and positive regard, positive respect for others. Respect that would not allow them to be oppressive to others because um, the opposite of humility is actually pride. So you would be teaching your child the opposite of pride, which is to be meek, which is to be modest. Regard yourself highly, yes, and regard your fellow men and others highly too. So humility is essential. Um, then the other part is f the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord refers to respecting God, respecting him for who he is as creator, respecting him for um, the laws, the principles, the guidance, all the things that he says in are best for us in our current existence in this world that he made and placed us in. So humility and fear of the Lord is the key thing in training up a child in the way they should go. Is this supported anywhere else in the Bible? If we look at the Ten Commandments, we can actually see that the first half talks about fear for the Lord. It guides us in the different things that we should understand about God. And a part of that is also respecting Him as Creator. And the second half shows us talks to us about regard for self and our fellow men, treating others as we would like to be treated, respecting others as much as we would want to be respected. So I believe that the Ten Commandments also demonstrate this principle of the path that children should be trained in. The path is humility and fear of the Lord, meekness, and respect for God the Creator. You can't lose if you implement this, if you parent intentionally by doing this, by inculcating humility in your child and inculcating um, respect and fear for God. So I hope this has been somewhat enlightening. I hope that 
it helps a young parent out there to be a bit more clear in their own mind about how it is they can train up a child in the way that they should go. Thank you for joining me today on This Way to Hope. Have yourselves a lovely day. Bye.